Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. You got your sweat on, spent some time with loved ones, and had a fantastic breakfast. All right, let's crack on with today's video looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum as we're only just a couple of hours away from the Ethereum merge. We got support resistance, pivot points, what we're going to look out for in terms of danger, trap, resistance levels. If you haven't already, smash up the likes, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. I know it's a lot of jobs you got to do at the beginning. And last quick one here, guys, I'm in Phuket. If you want to do a meetup, let me know Saturday or Sunday. There is a poll on my YouTube page. All right, so let's do a meetup here this weekend. All right, enough about me. Let's have a look at S&P. Last 24 hours, not much has really happened. It is really just trying to hold this support line here, the diagonal. S&P, NASDAQ, very much correlated with Bitcoin cryptocurrencies. We have a lot of these news events coming out at this point in time. So these levels are for S&P around 3,880 points. Now, like I said in the previous videos here on the channel, I am looking for almost an inev inevitable retest of these previous lows at about 3,700 points. We have a low at 36, and remember the macro support here for the S&P is around 35. Basically a repeat here about our investing, if we see further downside, worst case scenarios, around 3,500 points in S&P, obviously it's going to affect cryptocurrencies, but I don't want people to be screwed at the bottoms. I want people to be understanding what's happening next. And the fact is we're probably in a macro bottoming pattern. It can be ranging from 3,500 points to 4,500 points, but we're in a macro bottoming pattern across Bitcoin, ETH, that's what I'm thinking is happening at this moment. Of course, I can be wrong, but we want to buy low, sell high. We don't need to buy the exact low or sell the exact top. We just need to buy in the range. All right, so that's what we've got on S&P. Not much has happened in the last 24 hours. NASDAQ as well. The market really hasn't gone anywhere after it was scared off from that previous dump, but there hasn't been that much upside momentum. So maybe it's just the scare, the holding for a bit, and then the, the pivot point at the bottom here is if we break this low on the 6th, 11,928 points, 50% is only a couple hundred points below, and then that leads us pretty close to that previous level of 11,000. The NASDAQ is weaker than the S&P at this point in time, so let's keep that in mind if we start to see some breakdown on the NASDAQ. However, Bitcoin is holding up a little bit steadier, so hopefully we get some sort of decoupling between the NASDAQ and Bitcoin, just to show that a little bit more strength in the cryptos as they potentially take off a little bit sooner than, than the NASDAQ. We'll wait and see. I'm not trying to claim anything here just yet, but this is definitely on my radar. BTC, bear market downtrend is still intact and we just got rejected. The last few days, you know, this has happened again off the bear market downtrend. It's so crazy how close it came to it and then got rejected. Short term, yes, on the weekly compared to the months, but it is pretty cool how this line is still being respected. The hopium, the benefit here for our longer term portfolio is if we start to get a break above this downtrend line, which could be coming if this low at 18,500 is not taken out, we could see just a little more time here before we get the break. I'm not saying it has to go that high, but we get a break of the bear market downtrend, which is bullish in my books, bullish, you should be bullish for anyone. And then we start to get a little bit of a drawn out fade out again. This would just be another check on my checklist for the bears to flip to bulls. Basically, the bulls flipping the bears, of course, back into the bullish state. We're getting very much closer to that point with a few higher lows. If it does go a little bit lower, overall, I'm still okay with that. Remember, we're just searching for that bottom zone, buying within the zone. I've got a fear and greed plan video coming up, so make sure you are subscribed and like the video so you see it pop up in your news feed. Basically, the fear and greed plan was something that we were looking at using to purchase Bitcoin. I've got the averages there over the, the course of the entire plan for 2022 and for just the recent periods of May, June, July as well. Stay tuned for that. And I'm going to compare it to our other cycle buy zone plan as well, where we're looking at just buying under the 19.5K levels as well. So check that out. All right, so the shorter term stuff on Bitcoin, the dangers here. Uh, the low here at 19.5 and 18.6. All right, so we had that shock CPI data. We've got the lower high in here. We were rejected at the 50% level, 21,900. So now the market is just going through a bit of a churny period because 
we did not hit our Wyckoff bullish flip, so we weren't able to get back above the 19th of August. So the market now has to decide, is there more supply going to come into the market, which would push the price down, or are we gonna see more demand at these higher prices of 19 and a half to then push the market back up? It's really just in shock after that one day here, got rejected, backing this level. So for me, the pivot points are that 18.6 is, if it breaks, which we're only about $1,400 away at time of recording, we're probably gonna come back down and finally get a test on the exact dollar, around that dollar, of course, 17,500. We've had tests at 18 and a half, and that was just uh, a week and a half ago. We got that nice test there on the 7th. Are we gonna see another retest of that? And then to the 17 and a half. Remember, this is all still within the structure, remains within the structure of a Wyckoff accumulation schematic. The only way this will get confirmed is if the market is breaks out to the upside or invalidated if it breaks a lot past 17 and a half, something like this, and then comes up, tests the underside and continues to fall away. That would be invalidated for the accumulation schematic. But for now, this is looking pretty well intact. And to buffer ourselves, even if the accumulation was to break down, we've seen our cycle buy zones play out very, very well over the course of BTC's history here within the 12.5% to 25% zone of our GAN retracement tool. From cycle low to cycle high, buying within this zone. So this is a cycle buy zone here, all right? Fair downtrend, still intact on the log, long way from it, and also like we just saw on the linear, just about there to be breaking through it. Not there yet, but just about there. Now, huge welcome to all of our new members in the Investor Accelerator. We had that huge masterclass go out this morning. If you missed out and you wanna join us, check out the link in the top of the video description. That's for the newsletter, the free newsletter. Drop your name and email address down there. Just click free investor newsletter. And you guys will get an email out in the next 24 hours to join the masterclass and of course TIA Premium as well. You can watch any of that content 365 days at your leisure, 24 hours a day. Tons of amazing reviews from the members there as well. So get down there and join us if you wanna improve your trading and investing for this next cycle that we see coming up. The ETH merge is three hours to go, possibly two or less by the time you've watched this video here. ETH now in the price chart is looking rather weak with the reversal down to $1,600 at the time of this filming. We're gonna look at the upside. Resistance levels are at approximately 1670. That's the 50% level just for this small range down, so the shorter term time frame. 1730 for the down leg from the top. Okay, so that was that peak out at $2,000. This was all the ETH merge hype running the market up, and then we see a potential lower top, which is quite bearish. And then the previous, uh, the top here is at around 1800. So that's the 1800 points here, $1,800. If we're to see some sort of wicks, still weak in my books. The wicks are still weak in my books and most other people's books as well. If we see the closes and multiple closes, that's a much stronger signal to get us to that 2K again and hopefully break the bear market downtrend once and for all on the linear scale. The log scale, we're still a fair way away from it. And the differences here are basically just the speed of the market drop and the distances between those at this point in time. So we still wanna see it get there on both scales. So at this point with only a few hours to go, we're very close to that $1,550 level. So that's basically my pivot point to the downside. This move has extended the previous move. So keep a really close eye on the market overbalancing in price and time. More days down, more dollars down as well you can start to see the flip from the bulls to the bears. And it's happening on shorter term timeframes and then can, but not definite, but can lead to the longer term timeframes. Wicks, of course, are not an invalidation, but we need to see what happens at the daily closes. Now, if those closes do come beneath 1550, that is going to set us up for the next leg down to 1400. And like we've looked at since the move up, these levels, uh, the tops here at about $1,200. We could see ETH revisit the $1,200 level. One step at a time, of course, we still wanna have some good news today with the, the merge coming through to be successful, but definitely keep an eye on 1550 because that would probably signal further move to the 1400s. The ETH BTC chart has been a key indicator for the strength of Ethereum, especially leading up to this merge. 
We've got a couple of tops in here at the moment. So you can see that the closes were quite low last week. We're going to the more macro time frame. We've covered the strong warning here. Uh, any of the possible moves to the upside in Wix are not going to be anywhere near as strong as compared to where the closes could be. So basically where the body of the, the candle is. So at the moment, we're just hanging in there. These were the top levels that we've uh, covered here. So around that 8%, the market is really trying to hang on leading into this merge and hopefully get a nice move and a close above for the bulls. For the downside, if we're to remain in here too long, then the underside of 7.2% is a possibility. And that would then spell a lot more disaster to me for the ETH versus BTC. The dollar chart might not show it, especially if Bitcoin is still going up because that would then still push the USD value of ETH up. But you could start to see some weakness in ETH versus BTC. No guarantees, as always, I'm not saying that it has to happen, but these are the signals that I'm looking out for uh, in terms of uh, weakness and strength so that I can then set my positions up. If I start to see some weakness in ETH, I'm not going to be buying on those dips. What I'll do is wait to see where the support comes into the market, potentially at the 50%, which is around 5.2%. That would then be a better level to be buying ETH for the long term if we do think ETH is going to outperform Bitcoin. So right now, it's still a little bit tricky. For the longer terms, if we see breakdowns, I wait for the support, potential more support down at 4% as well. Long way away at this point. We still got the, the merge to get through. But that's how I'd be looking at it in terms of a portfolio play if I want to be getting in on ETH. Rather than buying the FOMO, getting sucked into all of the news like we have seen many, many times before, these are the key levels to be looking out for to protect your money. Make money, save money and avoid the FOMO traps like have been seen in ETH this entire 2022. This was the merge hype. This is what they look like. Merge hype pumped up $3,500. Massive, massive dump sell-off. Again, the merge hype here still shorter in time and price. So the dollar figures less than what we saw on the previous merge hype. That isn't giving me too much confidence that we're going to just start to see ETH just skyrocket to new all-time highs. Sure, a break of the trends are possible. That would then still be less movement than the previous move, so it's still weaker. But uh, long term, I still see ETH going up. But I'm just waiting for a better position in the market that shows that there is buying coming in, there is demand coming in, and then we're seeing some strength in the market. That's what I want to see when I'm investing into ETH for my long-term positions. Link is in the top of the video description for the free investor newsletter where you can join us for TIA Premium, get access to that huge monthly class on overbalancing price and time. Massive for short-term and long-term trading as well. I'll see you guys at the next video. I hope you have a fantastic day. Like and subscribe, there's your second reminder. See you at the next one. Till then, peace out.